Hello, I'm Audrey Canada. I'm a voice actor and I was just interviewed by Keith Andrew. I think he's doing a wonderful thing here, raising awareness, showing that learning disabilities do not hold you back. For people who want to know what is the Keith Andrew Network, the whole point of my talk show is to show you that even with having a learning disability, I can sell them out to something. And at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of learning disabilities and disabilities and never give up and prove people wrong. Prove to them that labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be to prove them and stem out to something. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Keith Andrew and welcome to the Keith Andrew Network available on all social medias. That's right, LinkedIn, YouTube, Instagram. If you're watching it, it's on social medias. Today is episode 1061. We're here with a great guest. He already introduced himself in the promo. So let's jump right into the interview. First question I want to ask you is tell our audience a little bit about yourself. Hello. My name's Andre, and I'm a voice actor. I've been voice acting professionally for about a year. I just reached my year anniversary, or I suppose my work anniversary. And uh, so far, it's been a great ride. I've been able to work on a few video games, a few uh, audio dramas, an audio book, and some more things that are in the pipeline for uh, 2024. And it's been... um. It's been a wild ride, a fun one, but a wild ride. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And then there's a lot of great questions so I want to ask you. I asked mm -hmm. you the top 15, but now it's actually the top 14. Mm -hmm. But the one thing I want to start off is you have a great voice. Was there anyone who wanted, well, let me ask you this way. Was there anyone that inspired you to create that voice? Or is that your normal voice? This is my speaking voice. <laughs> I've been, uh, my voice started sounding like this more or less uh eighth grade something like that sometime between seventh and eighth grade it's a funny story about that actually um i remember waking up and it my voice wasn't quite as deep but i remember waking up and it was definitely deeper and i think i, I rolled out of bed and uh i think i just called downstairs it had to have been a weekend right because i remember calling downstairs and asking like hey ma what's for breakfast and i was like oh, is that me like, oh, I sound different. And um, <laughs> everyone else in the house is like, who, who, who was that? Like, what the heck? <laughs> and my father, like, walks downstairs and he sees me and he's like, that's you. And I'm like, I guess so. <laughs> I guess that's how I sound now. Like I said, it wasn't quite as deep, but it was definitely noticeably deeper from, you know, your average teenage, you know, young teenager, preteen or what have you. <laughs> and I definitely had a lot of fun with it in school for the next couple of days. <laughs> Hey, it's a GIF. You might as well use it, right? <laughs> yeah. It took me, well, until last year to decide to use it, really. <laughs> prior okay. to... I'll hmm? oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, prior to that, I did things for fun here and there. Like, um, made videos, did D&D, &D, played D&D. &D, but other than that, I only really started using my voice professionally last year. Well, if you're interested, I would like to hire you to be my narrator. You have a great voice. <laughs> sure. I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And that's one of those things where I know some people probably get into voiceover because they're told that. I I didn't, interestingly enough, I didn't really start getting told that until I started doing voice acting. Because growing up, I think I said this in the promo, I was always, I wasn't, I wouldn't say I'm a goofy guy, but I like to, you know, joke around. And part of me joking around would be to come up with different characters and sort of just do skits, I guess. And, you know, it would entertain the people around me. So <laughs> just kept with it. No, I agree. And for the viewers, some episodes are PG, some are PG-13, some are rated M for mature. Reason for that, every episode's different, and I want the guests to feel extremely comfortable be yourself it's best for me i know i'm wearing filter glasses so i'm not mm -hmm. high or anything but mm -hmm. the reason i wear the glasses is right now i'm staring at you 
Right. But I should be looking at the green dot. So without the filters, it looks like I'm cross-sided. <laughs> it's kind of like that, yeah, tied to my eyes, and I can focus on the interview instead of, what the hell was I staring at? Or what the, why is <laughs> one eye over here and one over here? I get so, you looking back at it. <laughs> so, you know, it looks good. I, mean, I think it looks nice. So it doesn't really yeah. make a difference. For a second, I didn't know it was a filter, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I can actually wear normal glasses, but then again, I can't read what's on the card. So it's kind of like filter works. Yeah, I get you. <laughs> so <laughs> then, next one on acting, you mentioned you did voiceovers for video games. Yeah. What were some of your favorite video games that you did voiceovers for? So my favorite, that's a tough one. Because the game called, there's a game called Dark Envoy. It just came out like 24th of last month. And that's my first large production. Like, it's a large, like the budgets, you know, larger budget. I play a main character and it's, yeah. But my, most of my dialogue is pretty standard because the game isn't too, it's a fantasy setting but the game isn't over the top. So throughout the game, I'm doing this voice. Like this is, this is what you'll hear more or less. Um, of course, with in certain kind of en energy here and there to fit the situation, whether I'm slashing a monster or just speaking with my companions. But, um, that is special to me because just of that, that, that first big role kind of thing, you know, but the most, and I had a lot of fun with that. But I'd say so far as of right now, I've the most fun I've had is there's a game called Raw Metal. It's like early alpha. I think it, the, the demo is still on Steam. Pretty, pretty stylish game. I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes. But I would say that one's the most fun just because I play a guard. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, as the guard chasing the protagonist around, I'm going to get beat up. And it was honestly surprisingly fun to portray the getting beat up stuff, <laughs> like getting electrocuted. Uh, and the character, his character is, he's the kind of guy where he essentially hates his job, but needs the money. <laughs> so he's just grumbling constantly and complaining. And, you know, when he, whenever he encounters a player, he's just like, uh, all right, whatever, you know, kind of thing. It's like, if we got to fight, we got to fight kind of thing. And um, portraying just, I don't know. I, I had a surprising amount of fun getting beat up or portraying the getting beat up thing. <laughs> like the, the character in Dark Envoy, his name's Benedict. Of course you get injured, but it wasn't quite as goofy, I guess. Because Raw Metal is a little more goofy with like the getting electrocuted and teleported, slammed into walls kind of thing. Because the game has a pretty large emphasis on when you do get caught, the fight mechanics are pretty neat. No, yeah, it sounds absolutely amazing. And that's where you mentioned uh, stream steam, yes. but it's also available for uh, Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo. Um, I'm pretty sure dark envoy will be, I haven't checked. I'm like 90, 90% sure, but I know it's out on steam first and then it'll come to consoles probably in the next few months um raw metal i don't excuse me i don't know if that's getting a console release i'd have to ask i know for sure that's going to be on though they're both on steam right now and i know dark envoy is going to get a console release <clears throat> excuse me don't worry i have that effect on people don't worry about it <laughs> <laughs> yeah but so the next one i want to ask you you are friends with a couple people but i know that well, obviously it does sound stupid because we're all in the same entertainment world. So obviously you know people right. I know and like vice versa. But I think I did ask you, but just in case I didn't, your friend, uh, you're a fan of Dragon Ball, like myself, correct? Yes, I haven't watched um all of Super, but everything else prior to like the. What was it called? Everything else prior to like that, the tournament I've seen. Well, yeah, I've seen as far as Dragon Ball content. Now, do you agree? Or do you agree or disagree that Black Goku should have just been Evil Goku? 
Um, kind of because it seemed like it was a letdown. Yeah, I remember that. I remember this conversation from a few years ago, and my thoughts on it were: I um, I w- I'm going to say I lean yes towards it should have just been an evil Goku, more or less. I think, it, but the direction they took it in was fine. I, I'm I'm pretty when it comes to stuff like that. As long as the performance isn't bad, if they take it in a direction where I'm like, mm, okay, that wouldn't have been my choice, but the performance is fine. So I guess I'm not really going to complain, if that makes sense. And to be honest, I, I had no problem with Samatsu. You know, mm-hmm. but it's it's funny. You kind of relate to the villains. Yeah. You know, at the beginning, you're like, Thanos. Yeah. Oh, Thanos is such a dick. And then mm-hmm. you're like, you know what? He was right. Hashtag make Thanos great again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Samasu was right too. He he was a little misguided, but you know he he kind of jumped the gun on that one. Yeah, which is like you said, it's it's what makes a lot of well written villains interesting, because yeah, most of the well written ones are use. If you stop and think, it's like this guy might have a point. He's going about it the wrong way, but he might have a point. He, he might he, he might he know he might be on to something kind of thing. No, absolutely. So the next one I want to ask you is have you taken any pictures with fam- famous celebrities and have you worked with any famous celebrities? I've never taken any pictures with any famous celebrities and have I worked with any? No. I've met a few like like famous voice actors and but I've never met any of them in person. It's all been you know, networking kind of thing. I would love to do so <laughs> very soon. I plan on taking some trips here and there. Um, but I've worked with some people who are well respected in the community, but I would not say celebrity. Like, you know, I because when I think of celebrity, I think of your Nolan North's, your Keith Davids. The kinds of people where you hear them and like everything anyway, more or less. At least all the, all the things that they're good at, like video games for those two in particular. But I, so no, <clears throat> I guess. Well, let me ask you this one, because you are in the industry of doing voiceovers. Have you ever wanted to do like narration for action books, like James Patterson or uh, Tom Clancy? Yeah, I'm um. I'm interested in all avenues of voiceover work and to, I, I like narration, especially actually, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry about that. Narration and video games are my two favorite things, though. I've been working a little bit more to get proficient, like as proficient as I can be with for commercial work as well. No, yeah, absolutely. The next question I want to ask you is have besides me, obviously, Mm-hmm. How do you work with people with disabilities? And for people with learning disabilities who want to follow in your footsteps, what were the steps that he had to take? So, hmm, that's a good question. I have never worked with anyone with a learning disability. No, no, no. So, and to answer your second question, though, the... And this is, and I don't want to sound generic because like you throughout life, right? There's always, of course, going to be setbacks when you're tracking a goal. You might hear no a hundred times before you get your first yes. Same. And and like, and I know with a learning disability, it can be more difficult, but honestly, like I've noticed one thing I've noticed is sometimes when I see casting calls, there's a lot of, uh, shooting for authentic casting right so i've seen a few calls where it says it lists the character and then it says ideally we get someone with a like an act like someone with a learning disability or someone who fits this background to better embody the character so for someone especially like if we're like we're talking about learning disabilities who wants to take and follow this route i say 120 percent go for it because and I get this. This is another thing I get a lot. People say, well, uh, it was easy for you. You have a nice voice. I'm like, sort of, sort of. 
it was easy enough for me in the context of if if you need a deep voice black guy it's like okay you know i can i mean i usually do well in those roles where they specifically request that right but it still took a lot of hard work it's not like i've like any other voice actor will tell you with like a nice voice you still hear plenty of no's before you book you know your first whatever it is so but to tie that back to your question anyone especially these days from what i've seen can do it there's no holding you back from really anything but in the context of voiceover now like there's always going to be characters that the casting director or the creators of whatever project would you know could use your voice and like and yeah there's like there's no like yeah i wouldn't think i wouldn't say that like having a learning disability would really hold you back in this industry as long as you can <clears throat> sit down and like really attack this re like relentlessly like really go for it because i'd say because voice acting's a business at the end of the day and if you have the capacity to like take and tackle a business and grow it efficiently yeah i'd say that like for sure it can be done yeah, and this one i'm going to start asking you two questions because All right. they're easy because they're short the first one is what are some of your career highlights number one and how comfortable would you be to teach everyone voiceovers so <clears throat> given i've only been at it for a year career highlight is the game dark envoy first double a title and i play a like i said i play a main character in it so that's for sure my career highlight because coming into this i was told oh well you know it takes years of practice you might not book anything you might not get this and that do this and that for however many years and then you know i come into it my first year i'm, I'm able to do something like that so that's a blessing. And in regards to your second question, for sure. I I, I really do like to teach. <laughs> you can probably tell because I like to talk a lot. But um, I wouldn't, I would gladly give tips right now to someone who was asking. I do that all the time. But to actually teach, like hold a class, probably not for a few more years. I, I'd want to get, you know, to that mastery level where I feel like, okay. I can really start handing down some knowledge kind of thing, but I would gladly teach. Yes. No, I agree with you. Now the next one I want to ask you was I take the big elephant in the room. So I'm going to throw you a hard curveball, and you can throw it back. Have you mm -hmm. ever been stereotyped and how did you prove to someone that labels? Well, let me ask. And it sounds like an asshole. <laughs> uh, no, have you ever right. been st stereotyped and how did you, convinced the person that it didn't matter but you were the right person for the role um i uh stereotyped hmm that's a good question let me think about that i um i have once actually it wasn't like really bad but it was definitely one of, like it was one of those um basically i was auditioning for a character that was a white guy <laughs> and my i guess my voice profile was fine but they were like hmm what did, they 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 were skeptical about my delivery how my delivery would be if that makes sense i had the right right voice profile but they were like i guess skeptical about that and eventually i when i eventually i mean it didn't take that long but i was able to you know just sort of convince them that as a voice actor, I'm at least somewhat proficient in changing the way I speak. <laughs> I'm at least some, you know, most voice actors, most voice actors probably is okay at that, even if they usually use their speaking voice. But that's probably the, I haven't really had that issue much in voice acting. Hopefully it stays that way, but as you know, over the coming years, you know, things happen, I'm sure. Well, fingers crossed. <laughs> right. But I get that, you know, every time I go for a job, and it's like, oh, why did you apply? Why do you want to do this? And as soon as I <laughs> mention, oh, I have a disability, it's like someone's sticking a knife in it or a nail in a coffin. They're like, oh, that's it. Well, we heard enough. Yeah, but I have experience. And as soon as they say I'm talk show host, 
But for disability, they're kind of like, you know, like a deer in the headlights. Because you don't, when you think about people with disabilities, you do not imagine most of them being, it doesn't matter if it's white or black, you don't imagine them being actors. You don't imagine them. You imagine like that. I know yeah. that's horrible, but, you know, but that's yes. the stereotypical picture of people with disabilities. But I just did that to make you laugh. <laughs> but no. the point is, i give you an example. I went for a job interview over at just one place. And they said to me, why do you want to work here? You're overqualified. And I'm like, what the hell does that even mean? And mm-hmm. I asked my um, sister Lisa in a way, what's that mean? She's like, they don't want you here. They, they, they just don't want to hire you. It's a nice way of saying this is beneath you and we, you're not the type of person we want to hire. So that's in a nice way of saying you're overqualified. Yeah. And I'm like, let me ask you, throwing it back at you. Have you ever walked into a job or any position in life and people had said, you're overqualified. Why do you want to work here? Yes. Um. So the one time I that happened to me was very recently because this was like a kind of in between, like a buffer between what I did previously and voice acting. So for a little while, I worked at a uh, a supplement store, yeah, because I'm I'm into like fitness and working out. But that was one of you know, I, I go in and I give them my resume. And prior to this, I you know worked you know, I worked for like the local government, the health department, things like that. And then I had already had this business going on, so I listed that too, you know, as a business owner. And so they're like, well. <laughs> and understandably so they're like okay why do you want this part-time job at this uh store you seem like you got a lot going on and you could be doing better than this and i was just like well i mean i am interested in you know <clears throat> like health and fitness and whatnot as someone who like i like the workout and exercise and i feel i'm not the kind of person to like if i'm gonna do anything i'm gonna do it 100 percent. so it in a way, it sort of made sense that they probably wanted someone who was a little, you know, I guess your average young person who needed a job between for college or what have you. But that was probably the only time I've been like, they said, OK, you might be overqualified. I did end up getting the job, though. But for for a second, the interview, the interviewer was like a little skeptical about me. All right. But the next one, actually, I'm going to pass it over to you. I do have top six questions that we can talk about on the sit down yeah. of the Key Fangie Network following the interview. But with the last five minutes of counting, I'm going to pass it over to you. Was there All anything right. you want to talk about? Anything you want to promote? This is your time. I'm going to put you in the driver's seat. Promote. Hmm. <laughs> mm, that's a good one. I feel like as a one one thing I guess I experienced somewhat as a newer voice actor is sometimes I feel like I haven't done a lot. Like I've done a lot, but I haven't, if that makes sense. So when it's as you the promotional thing, it's like, mm, I mean, I don't want to sound like tacky and be like, well, uh, you, you could hire me for a voiceover job. But like, I don't know. I don't have like a I would like to start things where like I can start helping other people and raising awareness more for like different projects but as of right now nah i wouldn't say i have anything to promote if that if that makes sense what about any funny stories or any funny pranks funny stories Hmm. unfortunately i'm a rather boring person (laughs) no but um i i think the only i shared the funny story in the beginning about waking up and uh you know, sounding like this. But another funny thing I would do was, uh, and I guess this is uh, where it gets a little PG-13. Um, I remember the following weeks I'd go to school and uh, I'd see just, you know, my friends or other kids roaming the hallways and it'd be really fun to just like, I'd peek around the corner and be like, hey, get your ass in class. And they'd be <laughs> like, 
<laughs> which teacher was that? And they'd go running off down the hallway, stuff like that. And of course, I had a lot of fun with that for a while. Or just just sort of messing with people in general, because like, if you can imagine some four foot ten kid sounding like this, more or less. <laughs> it, it was really funny to just watch people react to it when they'd hear me speak and just play play pranks on people like that. Yeah, absolutely. Now, the last question is, how can our fans and listeners follow you on social media? Are you on LinkedIn, TikTok, any of that fun stuff? Um, yeah, I'm on essentially every social media platform. Um, I can be found at Andre Canada, um, VO. It's usually like underscore VO. But if you type in Andre Canada and then voiceover, I'm pretty sure my website is like the second or third thing to pop up. And from there, you can um, find find me on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, you can find my IMDb page. Yeah. And all that will be in the scripts. And while wrapping up our interview segment, it was a real honor privilege having you as a guest. Our right. goal is to reach a hundred and more views. Make sure if you're watching, definitely leave a comment. I would like to interact with you. The guests would like to interact with you. The, more, the biggest thing that I need to work on is the engagement. So if you're watching, leave a comment. Thumbs up, thumbs down. It doesn't matter. As long as you're being engaged in, we would like to interact with you. But stay tuned for the quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to do the sit down with Keith Andrew by wrapping up our interview. It was a real honor and privilege having you as a guest. And I can't wait for part two. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And it was fun. <laughs> oh, the honor's all mine. Until we meet again, catch you later. Thank you yeah. and have a good night. Mm -hmm.